Hello, YouTube, and welcome into another part zero video. Yes, I guess we're back with these. All right, before we talk about the uh, wonderful Lady Six Sky of Maya, uh, I need to update you all on a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to do the draw. This is another part zero where we're going to, if you comment on the video, uh, gonna gonna give away a code for uh, the, the Frontier Pass. So comment on the video. Let me know uh, if you're interested in winning that or not. I know I'm sure a lot of you already have it. Uh, but you're welcome to give it to a friend or, or you know, do with do with it as you please. Uh, we'll be drawing the, the one that was from the Simone Part Zero video. Uh, we'll be doing that sometime this week. It's June 10th. Uh, sorry it's taken so long. I've had a, a, a bit of a rough go of, of a few weeks here. So sorry for the inconsistent uploads as well. Uh, hopefully we'll be resuming close to normal-ish soon. Um, and to that end, uh, really wasn't myself with the Simone... Uh, game so we're not really going to finish that one uh we're going to do a maya game and then we're also going to get back into another another uh um, grand columbia game so that will be coming at you shortly but don't expect to wrap up those games uh speaking of wrapping things up we will be continuing with tots uh we're, we'll make these two games tots um and then we'll get back to canada and wrap up that series as well so uh look forward to that in the coming days and weeks and uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's talk about Maya and Lady Six Sky. Uh, she's a very interesting, uh, cleverly cleverly made Civ, I think. Um, some really cool mechanics. Um, I don't know that the execution of them is to where I want them to be. Uh, you're you're going to hear me gripe in this series a little bit about some of her mechanics, and I don't mean to do that just to complain. Um, more so to emphasize like when we're encountering situations where where you know, what what I have to say about her mechanics comes into play, right? Like, it's just, it, I don't mean to complain about anything. I, again, I think she's a, I love unique new sieves that take a few times through to get used to. That being said, there are a few weaknesses with her kit that I would like to see uh, adjusted, just like uh, Grand Columbia was very, very powerful. Uh, she is a little bit underwhelming, even though she has a unique campus. So let's talk about her abilities. Non-capital cities within six tiles of your capital gain 10% to all yields. Oh, okay. That's pretty interesting. Well, how many cities can that be? How many cities can I pack in amongst six tiles or close to six tiles to my cap? Well, the answer is 13. You can actually get your capital and then found 12 additional cities to, to maximize the amount of cities that you can get in that radius. Now, you can absolutely do that. Uh, you are going to be a little, little bit limited on population. You're going to be a little bit limited on uh, the size of those cities, the production of those cities, and things like that. However, getting 13 observatories is a pretty decent way to uh, try to get to space. So... I am not a. I'm not going to be one that really tries to, because like your your map has to be perfect to fit all 13 of those in there, and I'm I'm of the mindset that somewhere between eight and 12 cities is almost ideal in most games, anyways. And so, being that she is a some a, a tall sieve uh, that sort of has some incentive to to be so, um, I think I think more like eight, eight or ten cities within that that radius uh, winds up being pretty good. But so 10% extra yields. Any other capital, any other non-capital city receives a minus 15% penalty to all yields. So I am I don't believe that the penalty or that, that the benefit outweighs this penalty. Um, you could also argue that you could just kind of ignore these and do what you want anyways. 85% of a city is certainly better than no city at all. Um, so I haven't I, I, I truthfully just haven't figured out the exact way to play her and, and, and what you should be doing and stuff. In my opinion, uh, we have heard we have heard from 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 Firaxis themselves that they had originally tested this number higher, and she was just knocking everybody out of the park. So whatever that number that they tested her at, um, obviously they they scaled it back, and so we get a ten a plus a positive ten percent and a minus fifteen percent. Well, I don't. I, we'll see. We'll see where the game goes and see what this feels like at the end of it. But in my gut says that this doesn't this doesn't mesh. This this. This isn't worth the tax you pay for having to squeeze in cities. 10% bonus isn't worth the tax that you have to pay to squeeze in those cities to make it all worth it. But it's an interesting idea. Um, I'd love to see it buffed a little bit, maybe like 15 or 20%, and then maybe this is minus 25% and really commit to that, you know, that plan, that idea. Um, but whatever. 
Uh, that what we have for for what we have, it's an interesting idea. What's really nice about this ability, though, is five combat strength to units within six tiles of the capital. <laughs> that, alongside her Hulchi uh, archers, oops, excuse me one second. That, alongside her Hulchi archers, allow you a very very defensive start right out the gate. Her her archers are near crossbow strength when attacking uh, wounded units. That is the whole little bit stronger out the gate, and then five extra combat strength when attacking wounded units. So you definitely want to pay attention to that. But this unit combined with that extra combat strength, uh, you can really you can really ward off some some warmongers, some people that are forward settling you. And remember, forward settling hurts you a lot because you you're very specific with the way that you want to set up your 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 sieves. So. Um, but yeah, that that five combat strength combine that with like uh, combine that with with defender, and you, I think you're almost untouchable uh, in, in a lot of situations, at least on deity. Um, and so that's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I I do find that these pair really well together, and and that's a real strength of hers, uh, the ability to to defend yourself and or take over a city state or some cities that are near you. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, so. In addition to all of that, how do you how do you make all this work? Well, settling adjacent to fresh water and, and coast does not provide extra housing. Instead, each farm provides an additional housing and one extra gold, one amenity for luxuries next to your city center. Okay, so what uh, what all does this mean? You might not be crazy familiar with every little uh, minute detail of of what that means and and housing wise and all that. So let me let me try to break it down just a little bit for you. So normally, uh, you get a bunch of housing for settling freshwater and a little bit for settling coast. Uh, you don't get that at all, right? So we have no way of getting that. What does that mean, though? Um, it means that your initial cities are going to have a really hard time growing. Your capital will have a little extra housing because they have the palace, but each additional city beyond that is going to really struggle and really need a builder. She is a builder charge heavy civic uh, civ. And and needs them desperately. So get your pyramids and get get your get your feudalism and get your builders going. Um, it, you might think that that ancestral hall is the way to go with her. I don't. I think it's too slow, and you care too much about which cities you settle. Plus, if you only need eight of them, um, I don't find like the ancestral hall play is a neat idea and solves the issue of new cities needing a builder, but. It is so slow and so late in the game that I think you lose too much ground because you can't go crazy wide. Well, I mean, you could go crazy wide if you're happy with a bunch of 85% yield cities. Um, but you usually don't want to go crazy wide and you don't have the flexibility of, oh, they forward settled me over in the east. I'll just go west. You know, you don't have that option. So I think that's too slow of a play. Um it's it, if if you can just have your capital send out builders or buy builders or capture builders, there are a lot of different ways to get builders. Um, but it means that you're going to have a really, really, really slow start. But it does mean that each farm gives you one and a half full housing and then has a little extra gold on it as well. The amenity for settling next to luxuries is cute, although not crazy interesting. Um, so she can have tons of housing capacity now. All of that housing comes from either your aqueduct. By the way, aqueducts are excellent with her because she never has water due to her settles, and therefore aqueducts are always full value. And as a space race civ, aqueducts synergize well with industrial zones. So, so there is that whole whole uh, uh, pairing that you should be paying attention to. However, uh, it, it's just very, very very slow either needing an aqueduct needing builders all of that stuff really delays how useful your city can get um or the speed at which uh your your cities can get useful if that makes any sense so this is punishing and and the and i'm going to get to a, a point about builders at the end let me talk about the observatory and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the, the combination of these two abilities and what her overall uh stre the, the weakness of her kit I I if you will Observatory, uh, pretty cool. It's, this is our, our second unique campus district in the game. Uh, this one has a, a, an interesting aesthetic and then also doesn't follow any of the normal campus rules. So no benefits from geothermal fissures or reefs or mountains or jungle at all. What you do get a benefit from is two extra science for adjacent plantations and one extra science for every two adjacent farms. You might think that that is very powerful, and I will grant you that a half-cost district, which being a unique district it is, is a, is a very strong thing. However, 
and you'll hear me mention it a few times during the Let's Play, it means that you're building pl a plus zero unique campus a lot, a lot, because you need to have builders before you even get to that point, right? Your builders have to either give you farms or plantations for this to kick in at all. So you need builders to even make this work. And then you also need builders to make all of your other cities work. So it's a very slow, very builder heavy, tile improvement heavy build. Well, what does that, what does that mean, friends? It means she's horrible on apocalypse mode and on anything, anything with any sort of disaster setting to it. Because what can happen is disasters happen your tile improvements go away, and all of a sudden your plus six observatory is doing jack for you. It's doing nothing. It is doing nothing until you get a builder back over there. So it's very, she's very, very finicky. Same thing with housing. Oh, I settled a new city. I gave it to housing, so we're growing up drought or up flood, and then those are broken, and then that city is no longer growing because it doesn't have any housing. And maybe it's maybe you forward settled something and maybe they're in a better age than you. And so maybe that city's starting to loyalty flip on you. It can be really, really finicky and really, really hard to work with. I really recommend dropping your disaster intensity as low as you want to go. We, we, we're playing our game on disaster two uh, to make it somewhat reasonable and not totally just off. Um, but keep that in mind. I really don't think you should play apocalypse game mode with her. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're going to feel the pain of, 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 of tile improvements being destroyed and basically her entire kit being destroyed as a result. So just be careful with that. Um, I, I like I think it's I think she's a clever sieve. I think she's a cool idea. I would like to see some tweaking um, with her kit. I, I, I feel like she's underwhelming in a lot of ways, especially up against Grand Columbia, who's overwhelming in almost every way. Um, one of I, I think I think there are a lot of proposed changes um, here. I'm just going to toss out a couple. I don't know what where she's going to wind up balance wise. I think the observatory would feel vastly different if you got that to science just from being next to a plantation resource and not necessarily the plantation itself. That way, at least I'm building a district that's giving me a yield and that doesn't get punished for, for being at war and having somebody pillage your, your, your plantation or even just disasters hitting them, right? So that would be one of the things that I would suggest. I also think that maybe settling next to luxuries in addition to giving you amenity could give you a housing um, that that would make, you know, you could prioritize like, oh, I can go settle next to these luxuries. That can be my second city because I won't need to babysit it quite as much right away. Um, so those are a couple of my ideas. I, again, I don't know what the, the final, the, the perfect concoction of these is. But a, as I said, it feels underwhelming. A 10% boost feels underwhelming. Um, but in any case, uh, I think those two changes would be on my list uh, of things I'd like to see uh, because I think it, with those changes, she wouldn't kind of feel as miserable as she, she sometimes does. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the series. Uh, ho hopefully uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, curious to know what you think about about her kid and if you've enjoyed playing with her. I've, I've heard that she's felt good to some people and ha ha people have gotten their first space race victories with her and that's, that's awesome. Uh, but very curious to know what you all think. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the series. Um, hopefully you guys are liking these Let's Play, these part zeros again. Uh, and, and please please comment on the video and, and, and enter uh, to, to win a copy of the Frontier Pass. My little, my little way of giving back to you all. So thank you so much. Thanks for being, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans of the channel. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, you all are beautiful people. We will see you later.